Jay's Fit Down Podcast. Of course, I am your host, Jay, here with Daryl Green of the 24 Hour Sports Channel on YouTube. He is awesome. Love his work there. So I'm glad to have him back on the show and uh, to talk about some football because we're getting close to the season, Daryl. Uh, believe it or not, time's flying, man. So thanks for coming on. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I, I see that, you know, uh, that you put out a lot of Panthers content on your channel as well. I know you're covering them. You're going to be out training camp soon, right? So um, just t- talk about them, man. You know, expectations, you know, going to the 2023 season with this team and, you know, Bryce Young, of course, the number one pick. So what are your thoughts there, man, you know, and what's what are things looking like uh, for the Panthers? Um, I think, you know, right now with training camp and everything, we're really in that time where hype is real. I yeah. mean, right now, I think we can say that every fan base – feels like they have a shot at winning it. And when I say winning it, that's who knows how far it can go. But I think for the Panthers, it's a team that having the number one overall pick, Bryce Young, the hype is real. And I think that, you know, with the draft process and the hype and a lot of people looked into that and some people kind of, you know, let that cloud their thoughts when looking at Bryce Young. But now I think that for the fan base, being able to see him in person, see how he throws the football, see how he does everything. I think now people are more comfortable with him and, you know, expectations, they're they're high because the reason I say that is right now, the NFC, some people see a window. We know we see the teams at the top, but I think a lot of teams really see a window in the NFC and also the NFC South. It's it's a division where some teams they think that it can really be had. I mean, I look at the Saints, I look at Tampa Bay and Atlanta and really all competitive teams, but I don't think we can say for sure we know a whole lot about what we'll see for, you know, really a lot of these teams because there is talent across the division, but we just have to see it. And that even goes for Carolina. So now really getting accustomed to Bryce Young, everything he's going to bring and getting back healthy on defense, expectations are really high. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned the NFC South. It's a division where, you know, there's no clear team that's uh, going to jump out in front, you know, like you, you could say the Bucks did the last couple of years, um, you know, more so uh, in 2020 and 2021 than last year. Uh, but it's it's pretty level right now. Um, you know, I mean, talent wise, mm, you, you could say as far as talented roster, I, I would go maybe um, – I'd probably still say the Bucks are up there, uh, the, you know, the, especially defensively. But the quarterback situation is a whole different story. Um, with Baker Mayfield and the Panthers, still great team. Brian Burns on defense. Uh, you know, they got so many, so many playmakers. Um, offensively, Bryce Young, of course. Um, but they traded DJ Moore. So, yeah. asking you about this, man, like, you know, do you think the receiver uh, room will be – sufficient enough for Bryce Young to operate? Because right now, the way I look at it, it just doesn't look all that promising. What do you think? Um, I think that, I think really when asking that question, another answer that I have for you is that I think that was another thing going into their process of drafting a guy like Bryce Young because we talk about these quarterbacks and really when you think of the elite guys like Joe Burrow, like Patrick Mahomes, you say that they can elevate these receivers. And I think that with Bryce Young, he can do that same type of thing as far as having talent who there's not really a clear cut number one like some teams may have, but he can elevate that talent. And really so far in training camp, you know, we're seeing a lot of things out of DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo, a draft pick, Terrace Marshall. So really there is a solid group right there. Like I said, you trade DJ Moore. So now you don't have that clear cut number one. But I do think there's a nice set of complementary pieces for them to work with. And really, it's, it's going to be a lot dependent on Bryce Young. I think that the receivers they have, they're pretty nice. Like I said, not an elite set of receivers, but some guys are going to be asked to step up. And I think if I had to keep my eyes on anybody, it would be Jonathan Mingo. Yeah, yeah. From what I hear, he's been impressing at camp so far. And I like that pick for Carolina. He's a very talented receiver. Uh, you know, he's um, the speed is there and he's, he's, his hands are pretty good as well. I like him. Um, you know, the chart underrated guy. I mean, he, he's, you know, been on a lot of teams, Jacksonville, Detroit. Um, you know, he's 
still a guy that's very solid, you know. I mean, they brought in Adam Thielen, you know, who's still at his age. He can still put up some solid numbers. So, yeah, you know, I look at it now like, say, man, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's not like you said, it's not Chase Higgins yeah. and <laughs> Boyd, but it's, you know, it's still solid. So, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll definitely see, man. But um, saying on that offensive front, man, um, you know, the running back position, Daryl, uh, we, you know, this has been something that's been a topic a whole lot lately, and it's been uh, very glaring for the NFL as a whole. Uh, they're not be- they're not being valued, you know, and I talked about this on the show before, but I'm going to get your thoughts. Like, what, what, what's your whole take on this, all this stuff going on, man, with the running back position and, you know, everything that's, that's happening? Yeah, when when I look at the running back position, I think I see both sides. And really, for me, the common ground, because I've talked about this running back situation a lot, and yeah. I mean, it was Jonathan. Jonathan Taylor is now in this situation. Josh Jacobs, Saquon, they worked out a deal, but still next year he's going to be back at the table with this. Austin Eckler, Tony Pollard. So I think that now when I look at this situation with the running backs, I think that for running backs – Even the running backs who can catch the football, who can play in the slot, still there is not the true value of what they bring to the team. So I think that it's really going to have to be the guy who's the focal point of an offense. That that's what it's going to take. A guy who he's when I say he means everything to the team, it's like basically we would see Derrick Henry. For running backs to be valued, he would have to run the Titans to a championship and then win it. Or a guy like, now we go to Christian McCaffrey. He would have to do what he already does, but be the number one guy on that team, stay healthy throughout the entire season, and then win a championship. And I think that even with them being the focal point of a championship offense, there's still a chance that might not work. So so it's kind of in the – it's a tough situation. It's a real tough situation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it's it's unfortunate, man. You know, it's like because running backs, you know, they they're not appreciated until they really are needed, and and that's just you hate to see it that way. I mean, because when you know it's late in the game and it's like two minutes left, you got the ball at your own twenty, like you know, you want to run that clock out. You need a guy that you can trust to go get those yards and you know keep the chains moving. Um, you know, or a guy that, you know, you trust come out the backfield, you know, whether it's a good pass or whatever, like, you know, you just need that the guy that you can rely on. And, you know, now they they just aren't appreciated or not valued enough. I mean, you can have owners going on saying, like, you know, well, if we both were to leave, then the NFL went, you know. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jim Ursay, the owner yeah. of the Colts, right? Yeah, he said that. He's like, uh, we – you know, if I were to die and if he were to, you know, like very bizarre statements, like I, I'm, the whole John Terry situation, man, like, you know, what do you think about that? Like, <laughs> I, I think it's a tough situation. And really, I mean, that is a team I like. When I talked about the Colts, I like the receiving core. I mean, they got solid tight ends, solid receivers, but still, especially when you have a rookie quarterback, he's a guy who is on a rookie contract. So you would think, that the process would be to maximize the weapons around him. But it's seeing that they're so willing to not have things, to not have Jonathan Taylor long-term. I just don't see the thought. Now, if you had a solidified quarterback, a five-year veteran, a guy who's getting on his second contract, I could understand why you would not be as lean to pay a running back before a rookie. Why would you send Anthony Richardson or even Gardner Minshew out there? Why would you send them out there without potentially the best weapon on the offense. I, I don't see that process. No, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, I mean, you know, I just don't get it. You know, like you say, I mean, they're having Richardson. He's more likely than not going to be a starter. I think he is going to beat Minshew out. He's, you know, he's just too talented. Well, from what I hear, he's been doing really great at camp so far. Um, so, you know, and – Still, you want a guy back there, you know, who's going to help complement that offense, you know, because they got the Ravens. I'm not the Ravens. The Colts uh, have a solid um, offense, um, you know, like Micah Pittman, uh, Alec Pierce, you know, Molly Cox. Like, I really like what they're what they're doing. And, you know, um, the head coach, Shane Steichen, like, he's coming from the Eagles. So, if they if they have John Taylor out there, it's, it's 
they're going to be really good. So hopefully this situation gets solved, man. I agree. It's just craziness, man. Like, you know, and I do you think I know that they said they're not going to trade him, but, you know, do you think Taylor ends up playing in Indianapolis this year? I think that um, right now, I can't see it. I, I can't see it going either way right now. I think it's kind of early in the situation because this is a situation that's actually been going on. But now that is getting more media coverage, I think that we just have to see. But when when looking at this situation and how the other owners have dealt with it, I think Jim Ursay is dealing with it differently than a lot of other owners. So, I mean, he he's standing pretty firm in what he believes. So Jonathan Taylor actually said he's not he doesn't want to play another snap on his rookie contract. So, like I said, when when talking about trading a running back like that, I don't understand what a trade really fixes because if you're going to trade a running back because you don't want to give him a contract, what are you expecting back for him? Because I don't think they're going to get anything significant back for him because not only are you trading this running back, but the team that's getting him, they're going to have to pay him. So how many assets can we give up if we're going to have to pay this guy as well, and now you're kind of in a situation where you just lost a good player for basically nothing. Yeah, a rental, a one-year rental at most, right? So it's like, yeah, why would I trade all these assets, you know, for this player who I might get one good year out of, you know, if not even that, a full year, if he gets hurt, you know, half a year, right? So it's like, you know, that's the risk you take, and I don't think there's going to be a team that will put out that ransom for Jonathan Taylor, as talented as he is as a player, uh, I just don't think I, I can't see it. You know, it's a different situation than Christian McCaffrey last year. A uh, very different situation. Um, you know, he, yeah, just different. When he got traded to San Francisco, it was like, you know, it, it's, it just was not the same type of scenario. But in this particular situation, I don't see Jonathan Taylor getting moved unless the Colts are blown away by what the offer is. But I just don't think a, a team is going to, put out an offer like that for a running back because they're going to have to pay him, like you said. So it doesn't really make sense. So I yeah, see. I think the thing about it is if this were like in the middle of a season, we know injuries are going to happen. So maybe if a team, if their number one running back gets injured, maybe they're desperate enough. They feel like they have everything yeah. else. And he's the guy that could be that final push while their running backs injured. But right now it's, it's kind of early to say now, Interesting enough, and I'm not I'm not making this connection, but the Seattle Seahawks, they have some injuries going on in that running back room. So it's just those types of things with training camp and really what team is going to become desperate enough. But like I said, at that point, we're going to be in the middle of the season. If he's not going to play another snap, that means he's sitting out of these games. It, it just wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, I just don't see, I just don't see it happening now. Granted, he could not. Like I said, it's too early to tell right now. But granted, I mean, he could not even play. You know, he might go to Le'Veon Bell route and not play at all. I, I don't know. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens. But basically, Jim uh, Ursay is like at the point where he's like, well, we're not gonna, you know, we're, we're not gonna extend them. Like this is not, we're not doing that. He's like, you know, he said we have to move on. NFL is a business. Basically, he's like, you know. And I, I really, again, I don't like, I found his comments very odd. But like I said, you know, he's saying, we're going to move on. It's a business. So it is what it is. Like, come on. And now the Colts are kind of garnish, garnering an image that's not looking good. So that's another thing about it. So <laughs> this is all crazy, man. I just don't, I mean, <laughs> it, it's just, this position, man. Now you, I mean, look, look at it, man. It's like now in the future, kids are looking at this like, should I even play the running back position now? Like, because when I, in the future, when I get to a professional level, you know, um, I won't be appreciated. I won't be valued now. So now that's trickling all the way down for generations to come, you know. So that's something else to think about with this. So, yeah, you know, you know what I find funny about the situation, though, is that running backs are being devalued, but we look at the two teams who were in the Super Bowl, 
they could run the football. Kansas City, Isaiah Pacheco, although he was not a high, he's not a highly paid running back. He wasn't a high draft pick. The teams are still looking for that run game. And I think that it's not saying that the run game isn't important. It's just that we can find it in so many different ways. But like you said, with youth football, if these kids aren't playing running back, if nobody's coming into the draft as a running back, so now what do you do? Now you're in a situation where everyone's caught on to what the owners are trying to do. And now the owners, now coaches and everybody else, we don't really have people that are truly suited to be actual running backs. So we don't have people who want to get 15 plus carries a game. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you might as well just eliminate the whole position altogether. <laughs> yeah. um, like, just make them like a, uh, just put them at receiver. I mean, you know, just take out that position and put it, put something else back there. You know, you have um, 11 players on offense, so, you know, just don't have a running back, you know, um, at that point because that's what, what it looks like it's, it's heading um, in our direction. So, but, yeah, man, moving on to a different point, uh, you know, uh, Sean Payton, of course, I'm sure you you know about his comments about Daniel Hackett and the very putrid uh, Broncos offense uh, they had last year. Man, what, what do you think about that? And uh, you know, Sean Payton had kept that one in the uh, back back pocket. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that ultimately, I think that he should have, even though you know nothing about what he said was false. Oh, no, I did. I think I think we can agree on that. Yeah. But like guys are saying, and like other NFL coaches are saying, when you're in that coaching tree, you know, when you're in that circle, there are some unwritten rules within that. So I wouldn't have if I was Sean Payton, I wouldn't have said it. And looking at it now, he's also came out and he he regrets making those comments. But I think it was just kind of one of those situations where he's a guy retired. TV analyst. Now he's back into coaching and it's really trying to get acclimated. I think that when you preach certain things to your team and like, like guys are saying for the Broncos, it's really night and day with everything that Daniel Hackett had, you know, all of the values and everything that was last season. None of that's now. So you just have to follow your own rules. Really? You know, don't get caught into the media. Don't let certain things and understand could have just kept it professional. Just give a short answer, you know, don't speak on the thing, hack it. That's old news. Could have approached it that way. And I think that, you know, he knows that. This is nothing that he already doesn't know. So in the future, just approaching it like that, business, don't don't want to talk about it. Short answer, keep it like that. Yeah, I agree. You know, some things you just don't go out and say. And then talking about the Jets and how, you know, winning the offseason and this and that, you know, and Robert Sala, when they asked him about it, he was like, yeah, well, you know, hey, he's like, you, if you don't have any haters, you're not popping. That's what he said. And um, <laughs> I love that by him. Um, you know, he's like, you know, hey, we meet week four. So that's the end of the discussion. Now. I'm like, hey, it's going down. Uh, Jets, Broncos. I hope, man, I hope they blow him out by like 40 points. <laughs> I, hope they, I, I hope they blow Sean Payton out by like 40 points. See his little smug face on the sideline. I'm like, mm. like you know, the little... <laughs> <laughs> look he gives like hey that's i hope i see that because that's what happens man when you when you um make comments like that you're not really supposed to make poke the bear you know as we heard you know in the nba in the playoffs right you know with the grizzlies you know so that's that's what i mean so i don't know man i just found it a little out of pocket for um him to do that and now they put your, put a target on your back so yeah and really i don't you know I do expect the Broncos a very talented roster, they, but I mean, I I don't think it's no guarantees that Sean Payton is just going to come in and it's automatically a Super Bowl contender. I think that's you know that can happen, but I think that to all to really right now crown them already, I, I just don't think that's fair because look at the division. <laughs> I mean, that's a very tough division. So. They got to go through Kansas City. I mean, the Chargers just paid Herbert. Hopefully, they, they're better. I see Quentin Johnson doing some things at training camp already. So, it's no cakewalk in that division either. I mean, I think that, like, like I said, he's been away from the game for a minute. Now he's back coaching. So, seeing that, it, it's not this, not the, really the same NFL. Some things have changed. A new division. It, it's some challenges ahead. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And the AFC, like you said, the AFC is, is a whole, is just a complete juggernaut. All these teams, man, you got the Ravens, they're going to be hopefully healthy next year. 
They brought Lamar back, you know, um, and Dolphins, you know, hopefully two will be healthy. So it's, I, I, it's, it really will not be easy at all from all across the board, you know, from everybody, you know, at all the divisions in the AFC, even the AFC South. Um, as bad as it is, you know, I, in Jacksonville, I think it's the clear favorite out of that one. But, hey, the Colts can make a little sneaky run. Uh, so we don't know. But I, I just think, you know, it's going to be tough. So, you know, they're, they're, they have a lot of work ahead of them for sure uh, in Denver. So we'll see what happens there, man. Um, but, Daryl, yeah, I, like I said, I appreciate, man, coming on the show and uh, talking with us, man. You know, love your work that you do over on your channel, man. You know, always you put out great stuff, you know. Um, so uh, I try to <laughs> model after you, man, and uh, seeing the work you put out there. So, yeah, just keep it up, man, and, um, you know, we, we look forward to seeing the uh, content you put out after you uh, go to training camp. So with the Panthers, so uh, look forward to that, man. But thank you. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> of course, man. And uh, just, yeah, you guys can check him out on YouTube, 24 Hour Sports. Just look him up there and, you know, man, subscribe to this dude's channel because he works hard and, um, you know, puts out great stuff. So, you know, uh, make sure you check him out and you can check us out here. Same thing on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Daryl, we'll see you next time, man. We'll be talking. And, hey, football comes back this week on Thursday. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's it may be the Browns and the Jets, but hey, football's back, man. So I'm excited. So, you know, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, it was good talking to you. We'll see you next time. All right. All right. See you next time. All right, man.